Hello everybody, Rebels of Cloud 9 here. Hope you guys are doing well. And today I'm gonna be doing a demonstration video on something really cool that I have been really excited to make a video about for a while now. And that is masking. Now these are masks that you can buy and these are made by Kit Masks. That is kitmasx.com. If you wanna learn more about these, there will be a link to the Facebook page and website in the description down below. Please go check it out. They are updating quite regularly, almost weekly with new masks for uh, various canopies and stuff. So let's gonna, what I'm gonna be doing in this video is talking about these and we're gonna be showing you how to apply these and what it looks like when these are painted, what they're for, why you might wanna use these. And some people, most of you probably know what these are and they might just seem a bit intimidating. So I'm gonna be showing you how to get over that intimidation, how to use these, and we're gonna see how they look on a model. So what these are here are maskings for the Shuttlecraft Galileo from AMT. This is the old, old one from, I believe it was the early 70s. It's a very, very old kit. And on the back of the packaging here, you have uh, a diagram of everything that you get inside of here. So this one is kind of a prototype one. So I have two sets in here just in case uh, I can test to make sure everything works right. So far so good though, they look really incredible. So this is why I replaced them, however. This is, these are the ones that came with the kit. You can see they've yellowed quite a bit and when you get really close, they're quite dotty and, and grainy. And let me just try and show you. Um, close to here on the on the yellow. Oh, I don't know how well this will pick up actually. But on the yellow areas here, it's not really that sharp. Um, on the edge over here, it's not really sharp. And so it's just, you know, when you have decals that look this sad, it's nice to just have some masks and, but they are a bit more work and they are a bit more intimidating. So here's my subject. This is the Galileo, it's all painted up, and it's ready for all of the masks. Nice subject to use, I think, for this uh, demonstration purposes. So, I'm gonna open up, see what we got inside here. So inside, I've already used a few of these. Inside here, we can see all these really nicely cut vinyl stencils. These look excellent, absolutely excellent. So we have here, we have a few Galileos. Uh, you can see kind of the negative of one right there. Um, this was the back, what was supposed to be the vents for the engine, as you can see right here. So that was that. And this is wrong, You're, this should be this part here should be clear and the outside of it should be black, which is what I went ahead and did here. Sorry, that's hard to show because of how big this model is. Um, we have the registry numbers here, the NCC 1701-7s. I don't know how well that's gonna show up on here. And then we have the side registry and red bar pennants that go on the side of the warp engines. Uh, over here we have some of the same and yeah these are the windows USS Enterprise there's a, a pennant registry again so this is all the stuff that we've got and it's always important to just inspect what you have and figure out which goes where and how you're going to be placing it now he also includes these clear transfer sheets. This was really this was really cool. This is something I hadn't ever done with stencils before. And so I was really, really thrilled when he explained to me what these were and I'm like, oh duh, I wish I was smart enough to have figured that out. But I'm not, you guys know that by now. So let's look at the instructions and in particular the decal diagram and just figure out what exactly I'm gonna be placing on here. So you can see here we have this red bar that goes across the main side of the hull here and then we have the nice registry numbers on the top and we have the same ones down here on the bottom we have this really 
fancy looking Galileo 2 there. And I think for the purposes of the video, we're gonna focus on the Galileo 2 on the front of the ship and this USS Enterprise on the front of the ship as well. So, we're gonna need some nice scissors. Mine are here under all the mess. And so what I wanna do is figure out this Enterprise one that goes on the front. So let me figure out which one it is here. Okay, so what I've done is I've cut out this uh, registry, USS Enterprise, and I cut it really close to the bottom. I just made it a bit smaller for a few reasons, is it needs to sit here on the front quite low, and there's quite a bit of excess, so it would have sat like this. And I wanna get it quite low in there, and so it'll sit at about right there on the lip. So what I've now done is I've also got the clear adhesive. Now this doesn't have a lot of tack to it. It's got some stickiness to it, but not a terrible amount, which is exactly what I want because what I'm really wanting to do is to place this down on top like this, okay? And now I'm gonna remove, carefully remove the backing Normally this is easier to do on the model, or on the uh, bigger paper, but this will work. Okay, so don't throw this away because there's a few little cutouts in the R and in the P there. So not all the letters came out, that's okay. We'll get to tidying that up in a bit. And so I'm gonna just do this. So it's gonna, I'm gonna put it on here like this, but for the purposes of <laughs> doing this on camera, that's gonna be hard to, for me to get at that level. So I'm gonna do it just right here. Hope you guys will forgive me for that. Mm, nope, not quite. Lost a P there. Okay, sorry about that. So there's the USS Enterprise. And I'll just... There we go, get under it there. Oop. There we go. Got rid of the E. I'll just press that down real nice. And so, I'm gonna go and do now is just get rid of all these little letters. And once that's done, we'll be ready to mask us off and get some paint on it. Okay, and here is step one completed. First stencil is down. Now I had to actually lift it and put it back down because I realized I didn't have it low enough because these Galileo uh, stencils, are they're, they're quite big. So it does need to be quite low. So I went ahead and lowered it and then you can see I added in the little um, sections there in the R and the P and it looks pretty darn good. I'm very happy with this. So the next step is to paint it. For that, I'm gonna be using some Tamiya tape, and I'm gonna be taping around the whole stencil. And that's just gonna create a bigger block so I don't get any overspray, because that's the last thing that I'm gonna to wanna to have happen with this, is get some overspray. So it's better to just be prepared. And you might be wondering, well, what about the rest of the pennants, especially the, the red on here? Well, I'm gonna be painting this in sections. So one of the things that I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna mask off the sides here with the registry that goes on there. And the same thing on the warp engines. 
I'm gonna paint everything black in here that needs to be painted now, and I'm gonna worry about all the other colors after everything has been painted. This is a bit of a slow going process, but it's one that you do wanna take your time on, and when you take your time on it, you will be rewarded in the end with some exceptional results. So, like I said, you don't wanna just start painting the black and then putting that on there. That's kinda of gonna be, I think tomorrow is probably painting the red and then the next day painting the yellow. So it's a bit of a slower process, but it works better in the long run and you have a much nicer looking finish. So I'm gonna go get masking here and then we can get ahead and start painting. Okay, here are the stencils all in place. And you can see here, I did the long straight lines as well as the what are gonna be the black stencils. So what I'm gonna be doing is masking around all the uh, black stencils and painting those first. Um, so I'm gonna leave these for another day, probably tomorrow. And what I decided I'm gonna do with these is paint these white and then paint the arrowheads here yellow because I still have those. I left those on the, on the maskings here. So I can simply put those down really quick back onto the model and then paint the red. So I'm gonna paint the red stripes here and here and once that's done, then I'm gonna apply the Galileo stencils. So it's a bit of a weird process that I'm doing with this. But I also managed to do the uh, engines here. So the stencil goes down here. Now I found something a little bit weird because um, I know what they did is they copied, all he did is he copied the uh, stencils here for me, or the decals here, and printed them out in the stencils, cut them out I should say. And I never noticed this before, um, but I'm gonna have to go check and see if this is on the real thing. But uh, these two here go on the engines, and the arrow that they're going, this is the front, and it's pointing downwards as they normally do in Star Trek. These ones are pointing up. So this is the front, and it's, it's pointing in a different direction. So that's a little bit weird. So all I did is I put some, you know, just some Tamiya tape over there to make that angle. So I'll double check and see if that's correct or not. But this will be taped off here on this side and on this side, and I can go ahead and, uh, yeah, let's get started. Let's get started with uh, masking these off finally and uh, get some real paint on here. I'm really excited to see what that's going to look like. All right, I've taped up everything around here and just pressing down on the tape one more time. So I'm gonna be painting this uh, section here and then I can remove those masks and paint the white and then the yellow and then the red. Now I went ahead and did the front here really quickly. You can see how nice that's looking there. That's looking really, really great. And uh, same thing here on the other side. So I thinned this paint pretty thin, I'd say, usually I mix at about a 60-40 ratio, and this time I went for about 50-50, maybe even to about 40-60, just so it's nice and thin, I can lightly layer it on there. Uh, one thing you're going to want to try and do, I've noticed, is you want to really spray at a straight angle. You don't want to spray up like this where it can kind of bounce around. You want to spray nice and even and it should get into all the nice uh, all the corners here because this is a raised stencil so you got to kind of compensate for that when you're spraying and another thing that's important not to do is not to spray like really far away you want to get your paint thin at a proper consistency and a proper air pressure that way you can get up really close here and just lightly build up the layers so with that being said let's get to painting here and uh Let's see how these stencils hold up.
Okay, here are the stencils all done. And man, I could not be happier with, with all these. They are just exceptional. Look at the, just look at that look. <laughs> that's, that's really the only words I can use to describe it. It just has such a nice effect. It's so much nicer than using decals, so much more rewarding on top of that. And this is just this is just really really exciting. I I am I am just thrilled with this. Absolutely absolutely thrilled. So I want to mention just a few things about this process. Some of the things that I've learned doing this over the years, and and in particular on this project. Um, these were a little intimidating to put on first uh, when I got going, but I quickly figured out how to do it, especially using that clear film to put over top of the masking um, to help place them. That helped out a lot. Uh, one of the other things that was interesting that I didn't think would be helpful was uh, if I sometimes would like take out the N and the 7 here and it would give me a bit of a guide as to where they were going because I could see through the stencil. So that might be something to take into consideration if you're doing a project like this, is to just remove all the, all the uh, numbers and letters just so you have that clear and you can see through. Uh, the other thing is it's nice to plot out how you're gonna be doing these. And that's, I think, gonna relieve a lot of tension when you're doing something like this. So for me, it was to get this this USS Enterprise stencil down first, and then figure out, okay, so then the stripe goes here, and then this goes here, and then this goes here. Okay, that's done. I'm gonna paint the black sections first, and then I'm gonna paint the red sections. Um, of course, I did the yellow one there first. And then, you know, once that was all done, go back and say, okay, I'm gonna do these Galileo number two, they're going to be done very last so they're they're out of the way i don't have to worry about anything it was yeah slight slight hassle to you know go back and mix some paint and repaint it white and then red again it didn't take that long so it wasn't too much extra work for me um probably the biggest difficulty was getting these ones down because i didn't have them glued um, to the to the air or to the spacecraft to the shuttlecraft, uh, it was hard for me to figure out where straight was, especially on this side. What is what is straight? So they're kind of you know I didn't want them to go down too much. It was hard to figure out that angle, but um, in the end it got there. Uh, the other thing to mention is the paint consistency. I mixed this at about. With each of the paints, uh, I use mostly Tamiya acrylics, and with some Tamiya acrylics, I do find you need different consistencies with the paints. But generally, I mix these at about a 50 50 ratio. And I might have even gone a bit thinner to 60 40, so 60% 60 thinner. And it was just all about lightly painting these on and lightly building up the color. Um, that was the big deal for me was to get that proper consistency and air pressure right because if I had too much if I had the paint too thin and I was spraying it on too hard it would run the risk of dripping underneath all those stencils and then they would be completely ruined um, I'd have to start all over again so that's probably the big worry is getting that right consistency of the paint and you're just gonna have to figure that out depending on what paint type you're using. Um, these were all acrylic, um, and they work really, really well. You know, they're, they're my favorite go-to paints that I've used for years. So I had no trouble with any of these. And, um, oh man, I, I just gotta say, like, you gotta try this for yourself someday. Cause it, it's just, it is so satisfying to see these all painted on. It just, it looks so much nicer. It has a realistic approach. I've been studying this particular model because they recently restored the real one. And, uh, I, you know, watching them and all the stuff that they were doing, it felt like I was part of that process in a way. So this is just, you can't ask for a better painted on look. Uh, the last thing I did I should mention is I did do a gloss coat on here 
and that's just to help protect the the gray paints on here from anything like in case the maskings were too sticky and they left a bit of residue that this paint would be protected that I'd be able to go ahead and, and clean that up did not have that problem at all no problems with these masks whatsoever um, we just over here where I left them oh, there we go so yeah I would like to say a huge 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 thank you to kitmasks.com and I am going to include a link in the description down below where you can go and pick these up for yourself uh, they also do custom orders you can you can uh, message them about doing stuff like that he's an incredibly easy guy to work with uh, I, I love I love this brand I love this company this is so cool I am I'm beyond thrilled of how these things look and you know now that I've done this once you know it's not like I'm gonna use masks forever uh, there's still gonna be plenty of projects where you know time is a factor and I'm gonna use you know decals especially if it's something small but I gotta say I, with the results of how these look painted on I think I'm gonna be using stencils a lot more than I think they're they're very rewarding they're very satisfying once they're done once they're done right and you just can't beat the look and effect of it so check them out on Facebook I'll include a link also to their website of course and you can go see he uploads new masks for Windows regularly I'm kind of I'm kind of amazed with how fast he's been uploading new products onto his onto his register but you can go to facebook.com and like their page there and uh, that's probably the best way to keep up with them and what's new and coming out it's a it's a great new little Canadian company and I'm proud to have been able to use these so, yeah, I think these results here speak for themselves. It's just, it's just really, really impressive. So that's it, gang. That's how to use uh, these kit mask stencils on the Galileo shuttlecraft. Please check out their website, and thank you so much for watching.